Welcome back to HRN HQ, where it's a busy day coming up. Sarah, Ahmed, not only do we have a mandatory payout pick five at Parks, but the debut of charting horse value on our picks page. Incredibly excited. Jeff, favorite Twitter follows. He and I have done several videos together, and he has a very unique handicapping tool that is going to sell like crazy. I, I would think. I think. Especially when he helps us hit this pick five. Before we do that, though, like, subscribe. This way you get all these great videos. Anytime there's a carryover, we're going to try to apprise you of the situation. And this is a big one. Almost a million dollars in the pool already, so to speak, with the carryover mandatory payout. I'd be shocked if they don't get to $3 million. Wow. Yeah, I think $3 million okay. in play. And you're going to bring it all home. Uh, well, we'll get to that because I do think scooping the pool could be difficult based on how I see it playing out. I would agree. I think there are maybe a couple of spots that you can lean, but overall I found that it was very hard to trust anyone in particular within this sequence as a potential single. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, my, I'm always going to look to take a stand, um, you know, maybe even in the first leg, which is race seven, race seven through 11, Wednesday at Parks, follow Parks and Chris Griffith, Griffith on uh Twitter, because I'm sure there'll be plenty of race day information uh, from that account. Very active, which is very helpful. We appreciate that. So stay tuned for however the track's playing, scratches, et cetera. But as it stands right now, decent sized fields, does look maybe potentially formful. And I am on who I expect to be the favorite in the first leg. That's Breezy Gust, who I not really sure wanted to rush up from the rail last out. Uh, but both wins have been gate to wire. And now with the outside post, think maybe a more comfortable uh, send type trip for this one. So I was all on board with this horse for a little while. There's but... a lot coming. Top of the chart, actually, for charting horse value gets the plus grade. If you're curious about what that means, Jeff has made a bunch of video tutorials going over how to use his charge for, for effective handicapping that will be available on the product page. This one got a very good rating there. This horse is listed in our horses to single report as one that you can rely on within the sequence. Oh. And I was about to do just that. And then I looked and saw that trainer Ernesto Padilla Preciado is 0 for 21 first off the claim. And that stat was a little frightening. Yeah, to me. I don't, uh, I, I'm definitely, when it comes to stats like that, live on the extremes. 21, eh, somewhat small sample size, a little bigger than maybe some of the stats you'll hear people cite. But to me, it's the O for 21. It's not like it's two for 21, which is a little less than 10%. It's O for, so yeah, that definitely plays a role. Uh, maybe not leaning on at a short price, but you got to lean somewhere. But if not that one, then who? I ended up using three horses in here since I couldn't trust that one with that stat in mind at a short price. The number seven horse federal case, this is a horse that's dropping to this claiming level, progressively improving buyer speed figures over the last four races. And then the eight horse flowed on. This horse one last time that he was at this level over a fast track, last out against tougher, and he was over a sloppy surface as well. And then the number two horse, he hate me. First off the claim for Jamie Ness. We know how well that they do off of the claim for the first time, 35% actually. Shipping over from Keeneland, and this horse has some significant back class as well. If you go back in the PPs, you can see a third to Vacoma in uh, 2020 in the Sir Shackleton Stakes. So I went three deep to try to beat the likely favorite just because that stat really, really uh, raised a red flag no, to me. Understandable. All right. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, this is definitely a multi-ticket approach, I think, because there's nowhere I want to totally lean. I do think Breezy Gust will be a single on – a ticket. And then if that doesn't work out, I'll need to have a single somewhere else, which we'll get to. Uh, I would say the second leg is the one that confounded me the most right now. Uh, I just have one four and I'm going to punt because there's some other pieces of data I like to look at that are not yet available. Uh, certainly follow social media and stuff. We'll update, but that's who I'm leaning on. But I, I, I saw this leg as the most wide open. I would agree since I'm on three totally different horses. There so. you go. That's that's five total of the, what is there, 10? Yep. Yeah. So I guess this is a spread race for sure. Um, 
The number seven horse is the projected pace leader in our Horse Racing Nation pace report. This is projected to be a very slow pace. So I wanted this one to be in front early if the pace is going to be fairly moderate. Um, this horse has been consistent lately, has a win in three seconds from the last four starts total. And then with the number three, two princes, this was one I wanted to use because I feel like there could potentially be some upside with this horse making a couple of changes. Hasn't shortened up in distance in a long time, um, October 11th in 2020 in his second start to be exact. This is the lowest level he has ever faced, and he is second off the claim for the previously mentioned trainer who is 0 for 21. First mm. off the claim, <laughs> so second off the claim, maybe they're going to be better. firing a little bit better than they would be first off. And then the nine horse, whose name is great, just A. Um, is it A or I? I, I like A much uh, okay. better, and I don't want to be corrected if it's uh, the I other won't way. say a word then. Well, I already did, but I won't say any more I'll words. I'll forget all that. Uh, lightly raised compared to some others in this field, does come in off the maiden win for 10,000, now dropping to the 7,500 level. And this trainer is 24% with horses have won the, having won their last start, so is capable of getting back to back wins going. All right. Well, we do agree spread, uh, do not agree maybe on the most likely contenders. One of mine was the favorite, though, which. If I dig in more and see it, yeah, this is a spread race. That's going to be an easy toss for me regardless. Uh, I do think leg three, race nine, for me, may be the most likely winner of the sequence. That's number six, Instinctive, which is no secret, eight to five on the morning line. But second off the layoff and has a win at the course and distance. And I just think is faster than the rest of these uh, based on what I've seen so far. Uh Ideally drawn for the seven and a half. I really wouldn't want to be on the far outside. We have some data to look at uh, from the track trends tool, but uh, instinctive to me, absolutely going to be uh, a, a pillar on at least one of my tickets. Well, the horses to single report agrees with you. This was the second one in the sequence that it suggested. This horse, like you said, coming in the second time after a layoff, after finishing second last time out, that was at a huge price 32 to one behind classic colors. Like you said, all great things to like. Another trainer stat that I found, <laughs> trainer Michael so Moore, good. 0 for 20, second off the 45 to 180 day layoffs. Mm. What are you going to do? Uh, I, I think, <laughs> I mean, that's not great, but not I, enough. The hor yeah, I feel like <laughs> this particular stat with the second off the layoff, I, you know, I'd really want to see, I guess, what the 20 did in the previous start. But, I mean, I just look at the numbers and say, you know, does that stat mean they all go backwards second off? I mean, if that were the case, then that'd be a big pause. I just, I'm sticking with this one for sure. I think Breezy Gust has, because off the claim, there's things going on there. Right. New barn, new fee, new regimen just maybe takes a start to get in that groove. Second off the layoff, I could more easily argue, anecdotally admittedly, that that just kind of happenstance of what happens in the next start. I mean, if you're gangbusters first off, and that's when you break your maiden or go through the N2L or N1X class, well, you're stepping up next time. Right. So I would expect that to be tougher. So obviously making excuses ahead of time, but this horse does look tough. I agree. And this is one that I was going to keep on my ticket, mainly just because it was hard to find a viable alternative. And it was like, if you don't like this horse, where else are you really going to go in this field? Right. So I would add the number 10, Natoma. But this one has questions to answer, too. This horse has been off since August of 2021. However, there is a positive, although small sample size trainer stat here, 20% off 180 plus days. But it is only one for five. So it's not hmm. like that really matters too much. At least you know he's done it. Right. That's my read there, not that it's ooh, 20%, but he's done it. Uh, leg four, the penultimate. Uh, always use that word when you get the chance. This is maybe where uh, I personally think some opportunity uh, for value, uh, at least based on the morning line. Number one, Super Comet is five to one. Do wish there were a little more pace in here. Uh, it seems like even the ones with the better pace ratings aren't necessarily front runners by nature. Someone's going to have to be on the lead. I'm kind of interested, maybe even from the rail, if this one could end up being in that spot. If this were a Churchill Downs race with that rail, I'd be loving it and saying, yeah, this is the time to go. Not really sure that's how Parks plays. Don't know enough about how the, the jockey colony makes moves like that. All that to say, though, five to one, I do think is the right price. So super comment 
Super Comet, one of the ones I'm looking forward to, hopefully getting home at $10 plus. I did look at this first a little bit, and I like everything that you're saying. I did go in a different direction, though. Uh, the number four horse is our projected pace leader and shows up very favorably on our Sire Moves report. Sire Munnings, 15% with turf sprinters, but 19% with dirt sprinters. However, the Horse Racing Nation impact number, we're jumping from 4% to 11%, so mm. a better bet and also likely to be on the lead, so I definitely right. wanted to use the four horse and here Vulcan. Uh, number seven, fast breaking cash. First off the claim for Jamie Ness, like we talked about already. <laughs> That's a fire move. We want to include those horses. And then the number two, press my bets in for the $40,000 tag for the first time in 17 career starts. So this is the lowest level that that one has faced. Admittedly, kind of some shorter prices, but the highest price in the morning line in here is 10 to one. So it seems as though all of these horses, you could kind of go in any direction. Yeah, with the shortest field, and it does seem compact in terms of how the morning line maker thinks it'll be bet. Uh, to me, this is where I would be more inclined to make a stand versus a huge spread because even with a big spread, you're not really going to catch a true separator. Right. They're all going to be on various combinations of tickets. So uh, did you mention the two? I did. You pressed my bets. Okay, that, that was actually the one I thought could be on the lead. Really? Yeah. Well, the Horse Racing Nation pace report. says No, it's two good. or four for sure. <laughs> um, so I, I don't mean to say, yeah, it's going to be the two, but I, I think it'll be one of those two, which well, makes either interesting in my mind. Right. But the four is the bigger price. Man, not really. Well, actually, They're all on I mean, each other. And a pace projector isn't a guarantee, of course. Of course. Yeah, it's so. a projection, time. which has some percentage of being right, mm -hmm. like a poll. Uh, final leg, number four is uh, who I look to. And I would say of the three horses I've talked about, this being the third, that I'll be looking to single in some fashion on various tickets, I'd rank this one second. Uh, I do think instinctive, most likely winner. Uh, but the four here, whose name is Bittersweet Symphony, shout out to the Verve. Uh, wide move from the rail, another horse who, uh, for whatever reason, I don't think loved the rail, I had to make kind of that circling move. Third for the barn as well. Uh, started this one's career in the Midwest. Now has been at Parks for what will be the third career start. Kind of that now or never vibe, I think, for this one at this level especially. Uh, there's always question marks to make. Like, do they even want to win? Uh, you know, that remains to be seen with all of them because they're maidens. But uh, I feel like with moving out from the rail, what we saw last time is good enough to best these if has the uh, fortitude to do it. So four for me in the uh, nightcap. I like it. Uh, this was a serious process of elimination type <laughs> of race for me where I actually went through each horse. I was like, no, no, no. So um, Sire Uptown Charlie Brown is over 16 with turf routers. And that is the sire of the two and seven. So I crossed those off first. Uh, right. Trainer Michael Aro is over 24 with first time starters. And that's the five. That's so the five. That's yeah. One didn't, on next. didn't have a lot to like there. Um, and then I ended up with kind of reluctantly the number 11 martini twist as a single that I was going to use in this sequence All right. just because I really didn't like anybody else enough to add in. And on our Sire Moves report, Valiant Minister is 0 for 3 with his dirt sprinters on a wet surface, 13% with his turf routers. The HR and impact goes from negative 100 to positive 61, showing that these horses are decent bets, although 7 to 2 on the morning line isn't exactly going to no, be a No, but I would say maker. singling that one in particular is A less likely single different. than others yes. would go to in the sequence. And I really just wasn't in love with anybody else. If I was going to use one more, it would be the four, like you mentioned. That seems like the other likeliest winner in this field. Um, but this was a tough race. What to, about La La Lucy? I think this one showed up negatively, too, and something that I looked at, but not enough for me to write it down. Mm -hmm. All right. that, that was kind of at the price. I was like, eh, I'll use for sure on the tickets that don't single the four. But, yeah, this, is, this definitely has the feel to me of a sequence where you'll you know, can go forth the way I play four or five on like three or four different tickets. And, Oh, how did I not have it? But then you realize to use like all of them on one ticket would have been $600. Right. So not going to, I don't have a strong enough thought that there's a 20 or $30 horse here to remotely consider putting that kind of money in. But with the 700,000 plus, whatever it is after today, I mean, even if there are a thousand winners of this thing, that's an extra $700 per ticket. So 
there's plenty of reasons to play. And, uh, you know, I think even if you're somewhat thin, uh, could be a huge overlay because uh, others like myself are probably going to overspread. So hopefully we'll be efficient, though. One last time, we're going to put our tickets up once they're finalized. Uh, but one last time, 11's your single in the last, you would say? Yep. And raise seven. I'll just read through it so everybody yeah. gets an idea. I'm two, seven, eight, raise eight, three, seven, nine, raise nine, six, ten, raise ten, two, four, and seven. And then in the nightcap, race 11, the 11. That's a $27 ticket. That's. That's doable. affordable. That's affordable. 27 bucks. Uh, not sure what mine will be yet because I really want to dig in a little bit more uh, to Lake 2 in particular, but certainly see myself needing at least one of the 9 in race 7, the 6 in race 9, or the 4 in race 11 to win. That's my strategy. Well, you'll tweet it out once you've oh, finalized. Absolutely. <laughs> the grid. The grid. The grid. All right. 11 race card ends. That mandatory payout pick five, trading horse value now available at picks.horseracing.com. Like, subscribe if you haven't already, but of course you have. And we'll be back for, I don't know, the Pennine Ridge? Something soon. Something soon. If not that, of course, we'll do another post draw with the Belmont Stakes oh, coming up. Absolutely. Plus yeah. the hardcore. So uh, much to look forward to next week. Very much so. All right, that's it for now. Thank you, Sarah. Good luck to everyone. Big Philly 5, mandatory payout. Good luck.